Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of the show. Today we're talking beer and we have a guest which is Gavin Fury. He is, I don't know if you want to call him expert, but he's more expert than I on um, craft beer. So thank you for coming, coming, coming over today and doing this. But first, thanks for having me. tell me a little bit about kind of your background in craft beer and what got you into it. Uh, I'm mostly just a guy who really likes to drink beer. There you go. That's, that's really what it comes down to. I like to drink beer. I homebrew. Um, it sort of started off with a college roommate of mine. Uh, we, we got the idea to try every beer in the grocery store there at the go. time. We finished the grocery store, tried to see what else was out there, ended up stumbling upon you know, IPAs and everything, uh, and it just kind of kicked the door open to everything that's out there. So the mission continued to keep trying as many flavors as possible. And you've got, you mentioned home brewing, so you've gotten into not just trying, but creating some things, and we'll get to that in a minute, but in my experience, um, I mean, obviously I started out, you know, in college drinking the cheapest stuff out there, and, <laughs> you know, whatever anybody had, so, and occasionally I'll pick up some of that now just, just to have, but um, it's a little different nowadays. Um, the market's completely different, you know, it used to be yes. the... The names everybody heard of, the light brews and different things like that, but even those companies are kind of going this direction. Um, what What is it, do you think, that's kind of attracting people to trying some of these weird beers, if you will? Well, I, I think the big thing is that people have options mm -hmm. now, because it used to be, you know, like you're saying, these macro loggers, these pale loggers that are out there, they dominated the landscape, that's all there was, mm -hmm. so if you didn't like this particular flavor profile, you were just kind of out on mm -hmm. beer. And beer is this really vast spectrum of flavors, um, you know, that appeal to a lot of different people. Mm -hmm. So pretty much beer where it is now, no matter what you like, there's a beer out there for you. And you're good, if, you don't, if you don't know which one it is, you should just try them all, right? Absolutely. <laughs> you should try them all anyway. That's right. So let's... Um, Let's talk a little bit about what you brought here. Do you want to start with these, or do you want to get into these first? Uh, we can do those first. These we'll, go, we'll go with the pros, and then so you can <laughs> compare so we're gonna my do a little shoddy tasting. work. All right. So I didn't bring, <laughs> talking about diversity, and I pretty much brought one style of beer here. <laughs> um, we're on the dark end. Well, before you get into that, um, while you're preparing, mm -hmm. a lot of people that I talk to that haven't tried craft beer or and it's not all black you know in color some of no, those you no. know it's that yeah. might be what we have but yeah um i think sometimes they get scared of trying it because it's a little pricier how it's also maybe intimidating to them maybe all the flavor maybe it's just the dark color i hear i don't drink that dark stuff um and, and my response usually is the stuff i like that's really dark it's i think people think it's like a really heavy kind of kind of experience drinking it um i don't have that experience with some of them i do some of them yeah, I, yeah. I drink one i'm thinking oh my gosh you know but um I, do you run into that at all when you talk to different people that are kind of afraid of the darkness of it yeah people are intimidated by a lot of different things um well sort of you know if you if you're already a beer drinker or you already were before mm -hmm. craft beer started picking up then you we're sort of interested in a style of beer where the mission was to have as little flavor as possible. You know, and they, drink as much of it. Yeah, yeah. It's light. It goes down easy. You really don't have to taste much. Right. I mean, uh, so a lot of these flavors are bolder and mm -hmm. more assertive, and so it can be kind of bracing if you're not ready for it. You know, you're used to drinking your Miller Lite, and then all of a sudden you drink something that was, you know, aged in a bourbon barrel for 12 months and, right. you know, has had coffee in it and <laughs> and you just get hit with this roast yeah, ball and, and you're I not ready to be, for it. When I kind of got yeah. into it, I used to, you used to mention coffee and there's chocolate and various ones. I, some of those things can be like, man, I just don't like those flavors. But when they come together, it's not necessarily what you think, in my opinion. No. Um, it, it's just, it's just a different, it's a different flavor to me. That's why I'm real open to trying things. I'll just try it, you know. Yeah. 
coffee. I don't really like coffee flavored things, but there's stuff with coffee as part of it that I don't even taste the coffee. It must be some yeah. something about the process that makes me like it. I don't know. And I don't yeah. taste chocolate in chocolate beers, but I love them. <laughs> well, it's sometimes well. There's there's chocolate malt yeah. that they put in those, and and sometimes it imparts chocolate. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, there are beers with actual chocolate in them that taste. Mm -hmm. That's another thing that I think intimidates people is they have this narrow view of what beer is. Mm -hmm. So you know they've got their Bud Miller cores, right. and so when you start talking like throwing around coffee, chocolate, all of this stuff, they're picturing chocolate Bud Light. <laughs> I never that thought about that. Is understandably a disgusting thought. It sure is. <laughs> but it's it's not that you know it's more you know some of them are liquid dessert, and I mean we're. I brought stouts, so we're honing in on stouts, but there's a, a lot of stuff out there. I mean, if you like, there's there's nothing wrong with the pale lager profile. Mm -hmm. There are so many variations of that right. out there that are starting to become popular. Like every permutation you can think of exists. So, I mean, if you're, cool. in, if someone's, and that's basically what I try to explain to people, you know, it's not about uh, necessarily switching up what you love about beer right but going further with what you love about beer so tell me about the first one here uh this first one is an imperial stout uh from wolf's ridge in columbus called dire wolf um there's a lot of crazy adjunct brewing going on and what i mean by that is people are throwing in non-traditional beer ingredients into beer mm -hmm. to create certain flavors they want to mimic desserts um, you know, they, they call them pastry stouts or, you know, things like that. Sounds and so, yeah, yeah, so I kind of brought things on the end of the spectrum because there are people that love that. Mm -hmm. And then you have your kind of purists over here that say, well, every flavor you want to achieve, you can get out of malt and yeast. Mm -hmm. It's all in the brewing. You don't have to add anything. You can just do it. So this kind of represents the just straight up skillful, skillful brewing side of things. Okay. So what does it mean by imperial stout? Uh, imperial is shorthand for bigger, essentially. Okay. Um, bolder, more ABV, um, more in assertive, robust flavors. So, you know, your, your standard English and American stouts probably range from about 4 to 6%. Mm -hmm. You know, your imperials are going to be 8 and above this one's 10.4 so it turns so, out i like imperial stuff so yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and so you know basically the the more alcohol is the more fermentable sugars right uh were in the wort which is the the beer before the yeast is added um and you get those by adding more malt more grains um and so consequently you end up with more flavor okay so what can we expect with this lots of dark roasty Coffee adjacent oh, flavors, some chocolate, maybe a little molasses. It's pretty smooth. Yeah, it's got a nice soft mouthfeel. It's what, ten and a half? Yes, sir. <laughs> it's a big so, guy. So are some of these... Um, Things you sit and nurse, essentially. Some of these yeah. things you you know you want to eat with, or does that matter? Do things taste better with food? Or? Well, you can certainly get into pairing things. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I think is interesting about this time of year is a lot of breweries will put out Girl Scout cookie pairings. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Devil's Kettle in Athens actually uh, in mid March did they they brew four or five beers specifically designed to pair with different Girl Scout cookies and then mm -hmm. you can go in and order a flight of them and That's eat the cookies well. inside. Yeah, so you can do all, all sorts of stuff. Um, people are making beer shakes now. <laughs> yeah, I haven't, I haven't run into that. Yeah. But yeah, something like this, you're not gonna, you're not gonna drink a six pack of this. It's almost liquor-ish. Not liquor-ish as in candy. Like liquor. <laughs> It doesn't, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm drinking liquor, but I kind of get that flavor. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, since there's so much alcohol, uh, kind of the flavor term for that would be fusel, where you kind of taste those ethyl alcohol fumes almost. Mm -hmm. um, 
just because it's it's so big and robust. Right. Some of that's in there, but the the chocolatey, roasty malt flavors also balance that out so that it's not just. You know. Well, I'm impressed. It's <laughs> pretty good stuff. Yeah, I I really like. Uh, everything this brewery does. Do they, does it change, you know, as it sits out? Does that matter at all? Yeah, uh, oxidation is definitely a thing. Uh, oxygen reacts with beer pretty quickly. Um, that's, in fact, you know, the whole idea of aging beer, people are getting into cellaring beers now, uh, is that, you know, even with a cap or a cork, it's not quite a perfect seal. So mm -hmm. what's changing the beer over time is little bits of oxygen Getting there. Also, in addition to the yeast continuing to work, in, in styles like this, they're not. There's not a ton of active yeast, but there's always residual amounts. Mm -hmm. um, so the flavor. If, if you, I mean, I don't know how long you have it sit out, but if it sits out for 20 minutes as you drink it, does the flavor change at all, or not? You, nothing you would notice. Probably not by any degree that you would notice. You would probably notice the, the a change in flavor just from the change in temperature more than anything okay. that's actually. Because, you know, as the colder things are, it locks time. the flavor We're compounds, and then as <laughs> it nice? warms. Okay, so I, I, I yeah, talked about sort of the pastry the, versus the, the traditional. This is our pastry side, but it's not. Uh, this yeah, is so from a, one, one of my favorite like breweries in Pittsburgh, yeah, Hitchhiker. Oh. Like yes. uh, this is a different imperial stout called No More Pie. No paid ads, by the way. This yes, is no, just, no. Just a fan. Highly recommend it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is an imperial stout with pecans, maple syrup, and vanilla. It's very desserty. Yes. Yes. This is meant to be liquid dessert. And that philosophy is kind of new to me, and I've been drinking beer for a long time. Um, the dessert beer. Yes. Um, it was suggested to me at a local brewery, um, and I tried it, and I fell in love with it, not even really realizing what I was drinking. So it looks the same as, is it the, is it, is it the yeah imperial style? So it's yep. the same genre of yeah, it's the same style of beer. It's uh, quite a bit. Well, I wouldn't say quite a bit, but it's a bit smaller than the last one. Then it's nine percent. This just literally smells like dessert. Yeah. So it's a percent off. <laughs> yeah, it's a percent off. <laughs> so we're getting smaller at least. Yeah, you can smell those. You know, just kind of like it looks just the same. But my God, is that yeah. If you like maple stuff. And maple is a notoriously difficult adjunct to work with because it, it doesn't last very long. So much of it is sugar. Yeast eats it out and it's gone. Um, so a lot of time and expense is usually put into successfully now, maple the, beer. Now, the first two we've tried, are, I mean, are there something, we're in the Mid-Ohio Valley, is that something people can pick up? N not probably in, not. Uh, okay. No, no. We'll this, have to uh, do this again with with uh, maybe a trip to the local store or something. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. No, I'd be really interested in that. Um, so it's a little less aggressive. Yes. Um, it's very, uh, and I don't know the lingo, but it's it's um, it's still very smooth. I mean, I don't know what people would think looking at it, but <laughs> yeah, it's not heavy at all. It's very smooth. You could chug it if you wanted to. <laughs> I'm if not you going wanted, to. I wouldn't but, recommend it. <laughs> but it's, it's not, yeah. Uh, well, it's, I kind of compare the mouthfeel with sort of milk, that like thick yeah. milkshake sort of feel. Um, there are beers that have lactose in them now to achieve that sort of mouthfeel. This one... I don't believe it does. I don't. I don't think it does contain any lactose. But um, oats will oh. smooth the mouthfeel out a lot. Yeah, the a, the, the flavor kind of keeps going, doesn't it? Oh yeah, really long finishes on these. The the flavors are really strong. And it's, another thing I, I like about this is you get these dessert flavors, but it doesn't become overly sweet. No, I don't get that at all. Like no. you, you don't feel like you need insulin after right. it. <laughs> I'm not a fan of real, real sweet anyway. Um, Me neither. Of really anything. I like desserts, but I'm not like crazy about them. It's, yeah. Usually it's the sweetness. You know, like cake, for example, I'm not a huge fan of just eating cake no. because it's too much sugar for me. It just, yeah, same. It's not, an, it's not a health version, which it should be. Yeah. <laughs> it's more of, <laughs> I just don't like it, you know. Right. So, um, and I make some things, you know, I make a bourbon glaze for various cuts of pork that I make. 
Um, try it's that it's very it. sweet, but I don't put a lot on. I kind of really just drizzle it on. It's a good flavor to go with the meat. Um, obviously, there's a tremendous amount of sugar in that. <laughs> um, I imagine. But it's, uh, yeah, I like the hints of sweetness, but not overbearing. Yeah, and I think this gets there. A lot of these pastry stouts will uh, go overboard on the sweetness, and it ends up you're just kind of drinking this mess of batter. You know? That's pretty good. So this is how we clean up, right? <laughs> it's 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 as disgusting as it looks. Trust me. It's it's gross, but uh, I'm a a marathon taster, so this is kind of just clean a, your mouth out a, little a bit, method huh? I've adopted when you're when you're at a, a bottle share and you've got you know. So I've been to, I've been to Napa Valley, California, Sonoma, to the vineyards. Um, the vineyards are incredible. Just seeing them is really incredible. I mean, it's like you drive through Ohio or Indiana, which I was just there, and it's corn, 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 corn. You drive through Napa, it's grapes as far as you can see. It's pretty interesting. But you go to these wineries, and the, the tastings are fun. I mean, it's not just, well, let's try some wine. I mean, it's an, it's an experience. Yes. Um, do they have places... Analogous to that with beer? Absolutely. Um, most... That you, I'm sure you've been a part of. Oh, yes, yes. This is disgusting, but I know. <laughs> yeah, it, does, it doesn't always taste the best, but it's, it's effective. Good. And uh, if, you're, if you're doing a marathon as opposed to a sprint, it's, it's good to stay hydrated. Uh, <laughs> so, a little watered-down beer. Yeah. But yes, absolutely. Um, flights are popular. Yeah. Where you can, you know, Parkersburg Brewing does the, just about everywhere will do them. Um, but you can select that's usually five ounce pours or less. Mm -hmm. um, and you can sometimes. And you do they, those in an order or no? I mean, really, it's just the order that you tell them to get them for you. Okay. So you, I didn't you know, know if you there can, was a method to the madness of. Well, I mean, I. I tr there's a. I have a method when I do Start it. out with the light so, brew, end up with the. Absolutely. The more subtle the flavor profile, the closer to the beginning you want it. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, if, if you drink something like this, and then you immediately move to just a clean, attenuated Pilsner, then you're really not going to be tasting all of that. No, you probably still and, get some of that left in there. Yeah, yeah, you're going to be like, oh, this, you know, this tastes like corn, and I still taste a little pecan, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, hops are another thing that are just palate wreckers, mm -hmm. things that are heavily hopped, uh, go at the end for me when i was it just on, out it, I, I, I i'm realizing now i really learned a lot about drinking in california um i was in berkeley for a while and that's where i became introduced to the double and triple ipa yeah there was a uh <laughs> i knew what an ipa was yeah i'll drink an ipa and then i went yeah. into this one bar that exclusively had single double triple ipas and um ciders that's all they served I mean, they like had their menu up on the wall, it was so small, <laughs> but they would come in things like this. I mean, mm -hmm. it's the, the triple IPAs, I mean, you probably got 10 ounces of it or something. In a pour. I mean, yeah, it was like beers. That's drinking liquor at that point, <laughs> it seems like. But it was incredible. Uh, I had never been exposed to anything like that. And of course, that must be how they drink out there. But yeah. there's probably not a bar around here that just exclusively pours IPAs or. Um, not, not, not exclusively, no, but uh, IPA is a fairly ubiquitous style, uh -huh. um, you know, so this, this whole craft beer movement started because people wanted to have a choice in what they drank, mm -hmm. and as it spread to more and more people, a lot of those people have decided, well, I kind of like this one thing, and so it's really the most popular style right now, but IPA is such a diverse style in and of itself, you know, because people often conflate hoppy with bitterness, and it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be. Um, there are so many varietals of hops, so many crossbreeds and everything, and they can impart different flavors, and, and, you know, that's affected by things as, you know, simple as when you add them during the boil when you're making beer. Um, that affects what they impart, but, you know, you can get melon flavors you can get grass right. flavors it's not all this like herbal piney bitterness that right. that's that's what was popular for a really long time and so a lot of people a lot of the the mainstream ipas still have that profile but there's 
a lot of stuff going on. There's milkshake IPAs now. Oh my! <laughs> well, the, the the triple that I have, you're not tasting a lot of those. I mean, <laughs> it's it's pretty high high octane stuff. I, but it was most the, of them I've were, had. And, they uh, were delicious. Yeah, the, they can be really good. They can also taste like pine sap and grass clippings. <laughs> but <laughs> but I, I've had some delicious triple IPAs. So which one are we going to next here? I know these are bottled on your own, so we're not paying attention to the labels, right? No, no, those are just... Uh, you got a B and something, a five yeah. and S. The B stands for just bacon. <laughs> well, I like the w bacon. stands for whiskey. Whiskey? Right. That's a W. Oh, well. Yeah. The Sharpie was running out. Yeah, it, it was. We, we actually switched Sharpies halfway through bottling. So we're going to be looking at a bacon homebrew in a whiskey? Well, these are two variations of the same beer. Okay. Here. They're both um, a smoked bacon porter, but the method of introducing the bacon... Do you bacon, drink that for breakfast? Or, I mean, <laughs> what part of the day does that you come You can. <laughs> I bet it would go great with eggs. <laughs> Just wake up, yeah. Um, and then this had a honey infusion, so we took cooked bacon that was dried out and soaked it in honey uh, for about three weeks, uh, and then heated it up to sanitize it and right. also, you know, thin it out, separate the bacon from it, and put the honey into the beer. Uh, this was bacon, dried out of course, uh, soaked in bourbon, okay, um, and then removed and placed in the beer. So, and there are different bourbons. There are cheap bourbons. Yes. And there are not cheap bourbons. There are not cheap bourbons. <laughs> I know that with my bourbon glaze. You can make a bourbon glaze for twelve <laughs> bucks if you want to, or yes. you can spend a lot more. And I will tell you, you can tell the difference. Can you? In, That's something I've wondered. In the glaze, absolutely. Because the alcohol is gone. Yes. You're cooking it down. So yeah. you're really getting down to the flavor. Yeah. A $10 bottle of bourbon, you can you can tell. Right. Um, when you cook it down, in, in my opinion, I'm not a chef, but in my opinion, you can tell because I've done it. I've done it. So I know that it's just a, it's just a little different flavor. Let's go after this uh, bacon one, for, or the, uh, the, honey the honey infused bacon one. Yeah, let's do it. So this, um, ooh, got a nice strong carbonation on that. Um, this is what we would call, oh boy, we're bubbling. <laughs> that means you got to chug it, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> ooh, might be a little over-carbonated there. Uh, so it kind of comes out like a soda almost, the way it's carbonated. <laughs> yeah, yes. And, and, the, and when the carbonation dissipates, kind of like that. You see, yeah, the carbonation is dissipating really quickly, and that is because uh, of the grease from the bacon. We weren't able to get all of that out. So fats um, really really kill the head retention of beer. Uh, and head is actually important. Uh, it's not just an aesthetic thing. So we talked about oxidation a little bit earlier. I thought it was um, just so they didn't have to pour as much beer when they served it. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, certain styles have... Uh, uh, a different appropriate amount of head, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's an oxygen block. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I talked to you about how beers oxidate mm -hmm. really quickly, um, yeah, or oxidize still, really you can quickly still rather. See the carbonation coming out of it. Yeah, um, so that kind of acts as a barrier against oxygen to keep your beer fresh while you're drinking it. So the the fats in the bacon, which we weren't completely able to avoid, um, prevent that head from staying on top, which the head is just the beer reacting. So this is, is like black coffee looking, basically? Yes. I don't know what I'm smelling. I have no idea. <laughs> Not smelled anything like this. No. What, so what's the smell? What am I? I'm smelling bacon and honey and smoke. The smoke is what I'm getting. Yeah. Just um, to, that's that's the odor that's over it's yes. on top for me. So I I'm in a very I eat small a lot of bacon, so maybe I'm immune to bacon. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> maybe or maybe I just associate the smoke and the bacon, and so when I smell the smoke, I think bacon. What kind of wood? Um, actually, it's apple wood. Apple, apple wood. wood. All right. Um, I get it. 
It's all in there. <laughs> Smoked bacon. <laughs> That's what I was going for. Wouldn't be winning any competitions because, you know, stylistically, you know, the head retention's not there. Right. It's a, this, is, this was a pilot batch of something anyway. Getting yeah. the grease out would be, I don't know. I've never tried very hard at that, so yeah. I don't know what the <laughs> method would be. Yes. Well, and I, I kind of feel like, too, you, you miss out it's on very, some of that flavor. It's almost very light to me. Well, this we shrunk down even, even further. This one's about 8%. So we've moved from Imperial Stouts. This is a porter. Okay. Is the, are those classifications based on alcohol content or? Not necessarily. Is it more um, about something else? Uh, the the differentiation between porter and stout is muddy sometimes, uh -huh. um, and sometimes it's based on context. There's a a lot of there there are so many families of styles of beer and America has resurrected some from other cultures in other countries and put our own spin on it. Um, so sometimes what, a, you know, beers will blur lines and, and it is whatever the, the brewer wants to call it. <laughs> that is just an interesting smell. It's, I don't know how to, it's odd smelling that in a liquid. <laughs> well, I'm a, I'm a big fan of uh, Rausch beer, which is German smoke beer. Um, where they smoke the malts. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a, a popular German brewery that I'm a big fan of, Eich Schlinkerle. Um, and they exclusively brew smoked beers. Wow. And they use beechwood smoked malts in a lot of things. And so I, I kind of, I tried one of those for the first time. And I'm, I'm a big fan of smoked meat. Yeah. And so when I found that flavor in beer, it was just like a, a switch flipped. Wow. And I was like, Yes. And so I was like, I want to make some. And this, this is my first ever batch of Roush beer, trying my I hand like, at it. I like, you know, I do some smoking as well. Um, I like the apple wood. And, I, and I'm not an expert. It's trial and error mm -hmm. for me. So my experience is some wood can taste like an ashtray after a while. I mean, you've got to pay attention to the, to the smoke. Yes. And then my experience with apple wood is not that. Um, it's... I mean, I'm just rolling smoke through through whatever cut of meat it is, and I don't know. It it, it just it just seems like it has a softer, more subtle smoke flavor. Yeah, which it's, I like. It's mellow. Yeah, it kind of pairs with sweetness. And I've done well. both. I've done. I've gone and bought wood, you know, chipped up wood in a bag, and I've um, chipped up wood from an apple tree. So you oh. know, I've I've had. I don't. Part of me wonders what I don't haven't paid, really investigated. Wonders what's in those store bought. You know, if there's something else in there, I don't really know. Yeah. Um, so I've done it both ways, but uh, I do like the apple. Um, there's a lot of other ways. I mean, there's charts you can look up to pair. You know, I've done smoked wings, which is incredible. Cool. Um, I bet I, that is. It yeah, smoking them because they don't get hot. They don't get hot in there, and then I drop them in the, in the grease fire or grease. Um, fryer to crisp up the edges and then toss them in some sauce it's incredible because you get the crispiness but you still get that smoke flavor it's incredible but um i've tried different things it'd be interesting to try that with bacon bacon i kind of like mesquite or um or applewood i'm definitely going to have to experiment with different woods i'll have to look up that chart <laughs> the yeah chart. like pork you know just depending on what kind of what kind of meat it is, you know, supposedly X wood matches with this cut of meat better. Yeah. An another method that some breweries will use uh, to make a beer like this, and I, I would have been into trying it, but I don't have access to this sort of ingredient, but they'll take uh, pig bones, like right. post-barbecue, and actually soak them in the beer. I, I know someone that can hook you up with that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I may have some in the freezer as we speak. Oh, <laughs> Oh man, we're gonna have to talk about that. <laughs> I was, I, I, my intention is to was to make a broth, but uh, or a stock, but um, I like that idea too. So you would smoke the the bones essentially with the meat, some of the meat still on there, and then use that boil mm -hmm. it off or something. Or? Yeah, yeah, and then uh, as as the beer's fermenting, so there are there can be different phases of fermentation. The initial one is where the yeast does most of the work. Um, and then once it's essentially ready, you can transfer it and 
do a second fermentation with other ingredients in it. So during that secondary fermentation is where I would add the bone. Okay. And it would just soak in there to taste. You know, you just try it every day until it's right. and then Right. That's a simple process. I mean, it, that, it really that is. It seems like it wouldn't, because you could experiment with, with different woods too. Oh, yeah. Um, different flavors of wood. So that's interesting. Brewing is a, a lot easier than most people assume. The yeast really does most of the work. Well, you're, you can buy kits, you know. You can, um, yeah. That probably have, you know, it's like IKEA furniture, I imagine, where you <laughs> just follow the, the process and you get the desired outcome. Sanitation but is the big thing. Once you, I think, once you understand the process, is pr you're probably getting into um, playing with things a little bit. Yeah. Does that, does that sound right? I think that's about true with anything, is you learn the rules so that you know how to break them. So what All do you right. think? I like it. So this is... This, what we just drank was bacon laying in honey? Yes. Okay. This was bacon laying in bourbon. Let's try that one because I love bourbon. Yes. So it's the same base beer, um, just with a different bacon addition. So I don't need to rinse my glass out. Yeah. Don't have to be that fancy. Oh, this, this guy's nice and carbonated too. In my experience, the bourbon flavored things just kind of kind of become very smooth. Is that is that correct? Or yeah, well, uh, bourbon is a little richer flavor, maybe has sort of a, a high barrier of entry because of that ethyl alcohol burn. And uh, once you've had a barrel aged beer. Uh, it's it's rested in a barrel that's held that spirit, mm -hmm. um, so it's taken on the flavor characteristics, but you don't have that harsh sensory of ex right. experience of right. drinking the grain alcohol. Right. You know, so you get you get all those you know flavor notes of bourbon like vanilla and oak, caramel, different things, um, but they're sort of garnish to an existing profile of a right. beer. Um, so it really, I think it kind of takes the best part of it and imprints it onto something else. So it's smelling the same ish. Uh, yeah, actually little... it smells quite similar. Yes. You've done these, you've brewed this before or is this like the first time? This is the first batch. So you've uh, tasted this before, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's been it's been several weeks since I last popped open a I'm bottle. I'm getting a similar taste. smell, but I know it's different. So if you just put them side by side, I don't think I could tell the difference in odor. No. I don't necessarily think so either. Um, and what's interesting is I think a lot of the bourbon character in this has oh, really different. mellowed out. I taste it. You think it's mellowed out? From from where it was when I first bottled it, absolutely. Wow. It was very assertive bourbon, <laughs> straight out of the gate. So am I seeing some of the, is that some of the fat from the... Yeah, some of that filminess there. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that's that's a problem that I'm going to have to address. So I've, I've, I've hit the flavor mark that I want, but... Got to work on some presentation here. <laughs> yeah, so you get the, the smoke, and I get that smoothness. I call it that. I don't, maybe it's not, but when I drink bourbon barrel stuff, I just feel like it's got that smooth aftertaste. Well, a lot of... That's not overbearing. I mean, I, I think when people say smooth, uh, a lot of the times what they mean is it's just enjoyable. Yeah. Um, because a, there are a lot of drinks out there that are just hard to drink <laughs> you know like a, a lot of yeah. people will describe these a popular descriptor as like drinkable right like that's... super drinkable crushable you know all this stuff and it's like well that's kind of the point if you don't if you have to brand your beverage as drinkable there's a problem right? exactly yeah because it's kind of the nature of the thing so it <laughs> cool well i've enjoyed this um yes. i've learned that i love imperial stouts 
always have just didn't know it because I, I never like i'll pay attention to like the brewer the brewery and then the type you know like for example mothman makes a black ipa is that what is that an imperial stop no that's a that's a completely different oh that's an ipa style. yeah yes kind of an, an oxymoron there a black ipa yeah uh, but it looks but like this and kind of tastes like this, I think. Yes, so that yeah. Can be wrong. Well, it's, uh, a black IPA is essentially a very assertively hopped dark ale. So, And I don't, you know, this, the, the super hoppy stuff, I don't think is my alley. But who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. I, I'm <laughs> kind of burnt out on it, but only because there's, you know... A, I'm that person that has to try everything, right. and when it dominates the landscape, that means I have to try a, a disproportionate amount of those, and so I just I get tired of them. But it's I think that's this, interesting how that happens. Or you get kind of get onto something and then move on from it. I yeah. guess it is if, if you just kind of get used to it. But I assume you'll circle back around to it at oh, some point. I have multiple times. Like I, you know, with this whole New England IPA, like the hazy IPA, where they're unfiltered. You know, I was really against that at first. I didn't like them. And then I, I just kind of kept trying them, and I've found so many that have completely proved me wrong on that, and now I'm a huge fan. So, <laughs> Well, maybe next time we will um, we'll do some shopping and some research and maybe bring stuff you haven't had. I love it. That would be kind of cool um, since okay. you've had a lot of it. <laughs> also, also local finds. Yeah, you know? local finds, stuff we can buy here um, that... You know, since I understand a little bit more about what I like, I'll have a better understanding at the grocery store yeah. or, or wherever I'm buying it of, I like that kind of beer, let's try that, you know, yeah. versus, I don't know, I don't want to spend $18 on a six-pack or whatever it is. Um, but we'll find a place where we can maybe buy singles because um, I know that exists. Yeah. So uh, The wine basket in Vienna. Is, oh, yeah? Is you can buy there. singles there. Pretty much exclusively. Maybe we'll go there. I like it. It's right. a great store. Well, I appreciate you swinging by. Oh, and, thank uh, you. We'll definitely do this again. All right.